Merry Holidays and Happy New Year! I'm learning! I just wanted to say real quick before the video starts that you're all fucking awesome and I hope you're having a grand old day! I got lots of stuff planned for 2023 and as long as I can keep that little squirrel running around in my brain occupied and focused I should be... I should be just fine! Hopefully. Anyway, on to the video. Dragons! Man, oh man, do I love me some Spyro the Dra- Man, oh man, do I love me some Spyro the Dragon. The year is whenever the fuck this game came out. November 2nd, 1999. Idiot. Makes sense. I do remember it being cold outside. So I'm standing in the lunch line at my elementary school, shooting the shit with my friends the shit in question? The missing no glitch in Pokemon Red and Blue. If you don't know what that is, I advise you to look it up. It's pretty neat. When the friend standing in front of me casually turns and says, Hey, dude, did you play Spyro 2 yet? To which I say, Spyro 2? There is no Spyro 2. I'm like 12. I know everything. Needless to say, I was wrong. I never actually owned Spyro 2, the original Spyro 2, until about 12 years ago when I bought it myself from a retro gaming store that doesn't exist anymore. I owned the first one, I owned the third one, I owned all the crashes, even the bashes. I owned both Raymans, and for God's sakes, I even owned Croc and Croc 2. I rented this game from a little place called Blockbuster. Hopefully everyone watching this knows what Blockbuster was. If you don't, you're missing out. Or rather, you missed out. Simpler times, Tim. Simpler times. No! This is not a review. <sighs> I'm just a guy with fond memories. Not only did I not own this game until nearly a decade ago, I never even beat it until the Reignited trilogy came out. Disgusting! You're not a real Spyro fan, you're just a poser! Oh, shut the fuck up, V. I've never hidden the fact that games like this tend to kick my ass and test my patience. But does that stop me from having fun? No! I'm gonna use the reignited footage for two reasons. Ah, ah, ah! 
Even though they're fundamentally the same game, Reignited just controls smoother. Like a greased up thing that needs grease. And two, everything just looks nice and shiny. This game takes place shortly after Spyro kicked Nasty Nork's patootie all over the Dragon Kingdom. It's all rainy and dreary outside, and Sparks and Spyro get the idea that they need to take a vacation to Dragon Shores. But alas, they can't, because they have a whole other game they have to play before they do that. He passes through the portal, expecting to land on the beach, but instead he's brought to Avalar, because they need dragons. Because they don't have dragons. Because they need dragons to beat this asshole. By the way, Timothy forgot to mention the whole title of this game, which is Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage. This little shit is Ripto. Ah, Mountain Does. Spyro and Sparks also meet several new compatriots for their adventure. They meet Alora the Fawn, you dork, Hunter the Cat of some kind, and Professor. The Professor. I'm pretty sure he's like a mole or something. And after Alora gives you your magical guidebook, you're free to start your adventure. Glimmer isn't the first home world. And it's populated by a bunch of little rats, some simp lizards that don't attack you, and then some great big giga chad lizards that do attack you. I assume this is also the world where all the gems come from. <laughs> Fuck this stupid bear. This is Moneybags, and he's got a bridge to sell you. Wow. I just now got that joke. And within each world, you also have several mini-games to complete to get orbs. A different kind of resource that you gather for Spyro 2 that, uh... You need. Along with magical objects called talismans. That you get at the end of every level. Except for the last Homeworlds levels. Because I guess a dragon already took theirs. What the fuck is this ladder for? Good, stupid bear. Once you finish Glimmer, you enter the first true home world, the Summer Forest. Yeah, they're all gonna be themed after seasons, so don't read too much into it. Not bad, but Artisan's a little better. Like most platforming games of this era, the first homeworld is where they teach this stupid little kid that's playing their game how to play their stupid game. However, completing these very simple and mundane tasks reward you with orbs this time around, so it's not that big of a deal. And uh, Triangle just doesn't drop you out of the air to your death anymore. It provides you with a hover, giving you just a little bit of extra distance to land after long glides, which are the first of several new mechanics to be introduced in this game. The first of the new worlds that I visit is Colossus. It's filled with chanting monks that sound a lot better than the original version, in my opinion, and they're able to use their vocal powers to move objects. The baddies in this world are big blue sheep and roly-poly oxen. Free. When foes are slain in this game, they don't yield a gem like they did in the first one. This time, they yield their soul. Then those souls are drawn to monuments around the various levels that provide Spyro with a limited power-up or access to more of the level. The first of these is actually in Glimmer, but dipshit forgot to bring it up. <laughs> this power-up gives you a spring jump that allows you to reach the professor who has a task for you because he's being haunted by a ghastly. The first of several mini games to be found in this level. And by several, I just mean two. In this one, you have to backtrack and flame all these evil green hockey statues. And the other one is to play hockey against this asshole. 
but you can do twice. But once their god accidentally kills himself, they give you their talisman, and then they accidentally kill their leader. Before heading into Idle Springs, I like to buy swimming from this stupid fucking bear because you're gonna need it to do one of the mini games in that level. There we go. Excellent. This music is. Ah! The citizens of Idle Springs are the same as those found in Colossus. Only these people have forsaken their Yeti deities. Deities. Gods. For gods of their own creation. You see, these folks don't have magical vocal cords that allow them to move solid objects through space. But instead, they traded that ability to breed life into inanimate objects. But immediately upon gaining sentience, they began an uprising against their masters in the hopes that one day they could be seen as equals. Unfortunately for them, Spyro doesn't give two shits. He needs their newly formed souls so that he can charge up this supercharge monument and free these rain dancers to kill this stupid dancing Kiki. Also, you swim down in the lake and talk to this guy and he has you complete a series of very neat and satisfying puzzles to gain access to the orb he had locked in his toolbox. Once that's done, you're free to enter the second part of this home world by swimming underneath the big fancy castle in the middle of the lake. Even though this world has only three home worlds, each one is filled with more levels and more stuff to do. Or at least it feels that way. Am I gonna look it up? Fuck no. And before we go any further, yes, there are flight levels just like in the first game, and no, I didn't play any of them. Still don't like them. The next three levels are Huracoast, Sunny Beach, and Aquaria Towers. Sunny Beach is a sunny beach filled with turtles. Sage the old turtles, young children turtles, and fucking annoying turtles. And these hilarious <laughs> duck people. <laughs> Huracos is meh. It's really rainy and sad and dreary and filled with the inspiration for Ratchet and Clank. Oh, that fucking music though. Finally, we have Aquaria Towers, which I rush through as quickly as possible because I don't like it. Not a fan. I don't even come back to this thing later to get the orbs. By the way, some of the levels require you to come back later if you want to get the orbs. After you get all the talismans for the worlds and summer forest, you're off to face your first boss. Crush. But before fighting this big blue idiot, you get a flashback on how Ripto arrived in Avalar by accident because of this stupid furry. Crush's fight is pretty straightforward. It's got some pretty neat music. He just stands on these pads and they change color. Blue sends shockwaves and red sends fireballs. Flame him when the shields are down and he tries to smash you with his big stupid chicken leg. Eventually, the entire ceiling collapses and he can't take it anymore. So he dies underneath the pile of rubble. And then Ripto escapes on gold. Autumn Plains is where this game really starts to tug on those nostalgia strings in my brain. Because this level's as far as I got for quite some time. Because Gulp is an ass! Ooh. God damn it, Stuart Copeland! Stop it! Stop making such good music! That's a joke. Don't ever stop. Our first stop in Autumn Plains is a level called Crystal Glacier, which is stuck in a perpetual ice age. Fuck those goddamn mites! Oh, I got tinkle. Oh, God. Oh, goodness. Goodness gracious. <sighs> you know, Tim, you wouldn't have to get up and piss so much if you didn't drink as much while we were doing these. Mind your own damn business. I do what I want.
At long last, we've arrived at the level featured in the opening sequence of the original title screen of the original Spyro 2. And the level featured on most demo discs. The Scalios Badlands. It's really fucking hot in this level. And you have to save these poor cavemen from dinosaurs. And you gotta kill these bone snatching motherfuckers to rebuild this guy's best friend. Spyro has to buy the ability to climb ladders from this stupid fucking bear. My god, Tim. Spyro's an idiot. Then you have to pay him more gens to get to Zephyr. Stupid fucking bear. Zephyr is a world at war with the birds of, I assume, Breeze Harbor. And they've clearly sent their best troops Baby birds that are fed explosives via their air support and their explosive experts. Why have they invaded such a lovely world? For food, of course. Breeze Harbor is a world at war with the land blubber of, I assume, Zephyr. And they've clearly sent their best troops. Small infants in buckets, literal firefighters, and explosive experts. Why have they invaded such a lovely world? Because fire! Stupid little bitch! Scorch is a desert kingdom that awaits the return of their monarch, Grimace. And it's been invaded by two small blonde children. Fracture Hills can be summed up by one thing. Also, I'm pretty sure this is where Allura is from. Magma Cone is filled with those same Earthshaker rock guys that you can't normally normal kill, as in Fracture Hills, and guys that are exactly like that except smaller and very rude. The fucking bear charges you to use an elevator. Moneybags has to stop with this rampant greed. Shady Oasis is ruled over by hippo people that eat fruit and get bigger, and uh, they've been invaded by genies and the speedy blue bastards. Ah, bug! Ah, kill it! Ah. I got it. Golf is a prick. A prick who eats fairies. I don't give a shit what any of you say. I can't be the only one that had this much trouble with this stupid green fucking demon rhino thing. Specifically, when the phase comes where you only get to use the old timey fuse bombs. I hated them then and I hate them now. They, you flame them and they don't even go where you want them to go. They just fly all over the fucking place and then he fucking eats them sometimes and gets indigestion. Granted, it's a little easier in the Reignited Trilogy because Spyro controls like butter, but uh, fuck off. I'm glad he's dead. This game is meant for children, Timothy. Fuck you, V. Once you beat Gulp, Ripto falls off the edge in his big silly chair, and Spyro's free to enjoy his vacation. No, seriously, I thought this was the end of the game when I first played this. I walked out of the room and everything to go to the bathroom, and uh, came back and I was in Winter Tundra. Got a hand to this snarky little shit. He really took matters into his own hands. He could have easily just hired new henchmen, but no, he persuaded that fat bear to sell him some bombs. And then he threatens everyone with violence. The stupid bear has one final skill to teach Spyro and then we're done with him. Brain damage. Like I said earlier, for whatever fucking reason, none of the worlds in the Winter Tundra have talismans. They just give you orbs. You see, Timothy, the magic of the talismans was used to unlock the barrier erected around the dungeons of each of the respective homeworld's castles. The Winter Tundra's castle doesn't have a dungeon, or at least not one we're privy to or need access to. 
By the time we reach the winter tundra, Ripto has already claimed the throne of Avalar and placed a very powerful barrier around the door with the same crystal that the professor was seen using to bring Spyro into their world. In conjunction with the power of the orbs. Put more simply, Timothy, the power of the talismans is great, but it's for a specific purpose. The orbs, on the other hand, are far less powerful, but far more versatile. And since they were used in conjunction with the crystal to power a portal, it's right to assume that the same power can be used to break through a barrier powered by that same crystal. We may have lost our magic, Tim, and you may have stopped studying, but I never did. Mystic Marsh scared the shit out of me as a kid. But not anymore. It's got elephants, rhinos, and these stupid fucking lemurs. And a magic fountain. Cloud Temple is ruled over by magicians. And is currently facing an uprising of evil warlocks. You mean ruled by weak pretenders and being usurped by those who understand too? Ah! Sure. All right. Robotica Farms and Metropolis are confusing. Let me explain. So Robotica Farms is the agricultural center for Avalar. And it's run by robots to grow robot vegetables. And it is currently being invaded by robot insects. Then you go to Metropolis, which is in fact a metropolis. The robot farm grows robot food and is invaded by robot insects. Metropolis is run by robots and invaded by farm animals. I get the farm connection, but fuck this ox! <clears throat> Final boss. Ch what? what the fuck? Hey, the gods! Ripto's boss fight music has absolutely no business being this fucking epic. You, Mr. Copeland, refuse to settle for mediocrity. You looked at this game and you're like, you know what? I made some good ass music for the first one. I'm gonna make some good ass music for the second game. And then you looked at the Ripto boss fight and you're like, you know what? Fuck it. Hats off to you, sir. Hats off to you. You gotta chase these powered up orbs around and get them before he do. Then he uses the power of the crystal to make a robo gulp. And then he uses it to make a Robo Pterodactyl. I was expecting a Robo Crush, I'm not gonna lie. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, Tim, you hate flight levels. This is what you get. This is karma. This is why you didn't be. Fuck you, this is not the same as flight levels. One, the flying doesn't end, it's an unlimited power up. And two, this stage of the boss fight is a fucking joke. Ripto plummets into the lava. That stupid fucking bear gets exactly what he deserves. And so do you. A well-earned vacation. In conclusion, this is my least favorite of the uh, entire Spyro trilogy. Now, does that mean it's bad? Absolutely not. This game is still fucking fantastic and I'd play it any day of the goddamn week. I just like the first and the third one a little more. Welcome to Dragon Shore, Spyro. Sorry, but I can't let you into our little park until you've found more of the gems and orbs hidden throughout Avalar. You mother...